Hi, this is Colin Keegan, Senior Analyst from Storage Switzerland, and joining me today is Seth Goodling, Director of Strategic Technology from Acronis. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Sure. So Seth, you know, it's interesting, I was uh, looking at Google Analytics recently, and some of the most trafficked articles on our site have to do with how to protect a virtual environment. But what's really interesting is that we find that so many customers rush to deploy virtual technology without even thinking about backup. So, you know, what would your comments be on that? No, no it's true. I, I think a lot of times w when the plan for virtualization gets set in place in a company, it may come from the top down, and the, the, the guy who is actually have to implement the technology to consolidate the servers may not have all, his whole shopping list done. He may okay. have a, a partial budget at the time. Uh, but the directive has been given to, to virtualize. So he takes a look at what he has, takes a look at what he needs, and, and, and oftentimes doesn't really put the whole plan into effect before they actually start virtualizing. There, there's a rush to save those dollars. Sure. There's a, a rush to consolidate the servers. And I think at the end of the day, there's a lot of parts, including the backup and disaster recovery, that can just get missed along the way. Sure, people can take a very tactical attitude, but then later on that could actually impact them in terms of how aggressively they can virtualize, right? So. Yeah. So I really like what you put up here. It's clean. It kind of outlines, you know, what you guys bring to the table. So why don't you take me a little bit through sort of, you know, what you guys can do to help, you know, from a planning perspective so that people can actually effectively virtualize. Yeah, I, I think the key really is it, as the process kicks off, I think it's really key to take a look at, at how you're going to recover at the end of the day. If there's a disaster or, or even if there's some, some issues along the way within virtualization, mm -hmm. I read almost half of all virtual deployments just never kick off. And, and even the word de-virtualized, people are, are, are going backwards because it, they didn't think about the whole plan. But if you take a look at almost that whole shopping list from the start, the, the, the tools that are needed, the hardware that's needed, the, the picking the hypervisor, deciding on migrations. Mm -hmm. um, Acronis has done nearly a million migrations from, from X to X at the time. So wow. thinking about how you're going to migrate P to V, or if you're coming from another hypervisor, how you're going to migrate V to V as well. Okay, so, so you can help people in the, if they're really starting out a bare metal stage going from physical to virtual, you can actually back up their physical systems and recover into a virtual environment, is that right? Absolutely, that's where we started in the industry. We, we started backing up physical boxes and physical machines. And, and as the virtualization industry evolved, we evolved with it. Uh, we started doing migrations around 2006 and then uh, we, we put our virtual products on the market around 2007. Um, having migrations built into those. That's great. You know, one of the things that really uh, caught my eye was that you guys also have the ability to back up and recover into any heterogeneous uh, hypervisor system. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it, we wanted to keep that as open as possible because we know at the end of the day there's a lot of options about what the customers have in their environments, whether they still have a tape system in place. It, it's important for them to think about it. Are they going to keep a legacy system there? Are, as they go to virtualize, they may have a great plan for their physical assets, but mm -hmm. they may have a horrible plan for their virtual assets. And it's just keeping all that in mind m moving forward. Um, we notice, I and mean, we've done several reports where we've seen they just don't protect that virtual data as well as the physical data, but monetarily it's worth the same amount of money to them. Sure, and, and no one you know, goes full board into virtualization overnight anyway, so there's gonna be a process where you're mixed you know, between physical and virtual, and if you have the ability to do both, right, and, and do it from the same um, you know, interface, if you will, then that certainly helps kind of ease that transition, right? Right, it saves on the end of the day. Uh, there, there's less training. If you've got one central, mon one, one module that everything is run from, it, it saves training at the end of the day. Um, it, it saves sort of vendor sprawl as well. You don't have a different vendor for migrations, a different vendor for dedupe, a different vendor for encryptions. It's, it's sort of an all-in-one solution. Uh, even maintenance at the end of the day, you've got one maintenance contract to sort of keep things nice and neat. You sure. still have your hypervisor, but, but in terms of the other things, uh, one vendor to sort of keep all that in, in shape is sort of the way to go. Yeah, the other thing I thought about too is that, you know, if you're going to go into a virtual environment, uh, you don't want to start, like you said, going backwards and all of a sudden start siloing your hardware infrastructure just so that it can marry to the hypervisor system that it connects with, right? So the fact that you guys can actually take, say, a VMware image and restore it into a Hyper-V system on a different, you know, hardware architecture, it doesn't really matter, right? Because, you know, to you, it's just, you know, data, right? It's you data, know? right. Yeah, so. It, it, and we, we're seeing a lot of environments that have a multi-hypervisor with, with 
you know, VMware's always seemed to have led the way in terms of market share, but right. Hyper-V is coming up, uh, even down through uh, Rev and, and parallel systems. We're, we're seeing a need where customers have needs in place for, for multi-hypervisors. Yeah, and absolutely. to be able to move those VMs around, be able to move that infrastructure around is key for them to, to put an effective plan in place. Yeah, no doubt about it. And then you also look at the uh, the whole cloud uh, service provider space, managed service providers. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was reading something recently that you know um, VMware doesn't have quite the same market share in some of those environments because obviously they're trying to keep their costs lower. So I, I could see how you know this solution could enable them, right, in terms of being able to more aggressively provide solutions that are at a lower cost basis because they're not locked into a, uh, a single hypervisor architecture. Right, and then part of the key of that at the end of the day is, is, is always getting that data off-site. I mean, off-site encrypted has always been sort of the, the, the best go-to practice in that right. case. Uh, we've got a cloud destination. It just looks like a, a, another storage destination in our software, so they can okay. do a true disk-to-disk-to-cloud -to -disk -to -cloud scenario uh, for recovery if needed. Well, that's, that's, you know, that's pretty powerful. So it really sounds like you guys can kind of take people through the whole journey from, like I said, ground zero, where they're completely physical, back that environment up, and actually allow them to start you know, gracefully migrating things over from physical to virtual while sim simultaneously protecting, protecting both, right? Uh, and then having that flexibility in terms of any-to-any -any virtualization, backup and recovery, uh, and, and also you know, enabling deployment into the cloud, right? Mm -hmm. So. Sounds like a really, uh, really tight story there. Yeah, I think the key is just thinking about the disaster recovery and business continuity up front be before any steps taken in that process. Just think about, again, if there's a disaster, if there's a need to recover that data, how far down do I go? Is file level good enough or do I need BMR? Do I need bare metal recovery the entire systems? So just keeping that in mind from the start, I think mm -hmm. that it's going to be key to help build your system and make sure that you've got a successful deployment at the end of the day. That's great. It sounds like you guys, you know, can give people the shopping list they need in order to start getting, you know, to that, you know, true virtualized infrastructure. So, appreciate your time. Thanks for being with yeah, us today. Thank you very much. Tom Keegan, senior analyst from Storage Switzerland. Thanks for tuning in.